Hey everybody, it's Gomlet X, and welcome back to some more Magic Green, and today we're going to be playing another premiere draft of Cons of Tarkir. Without further ado, let's get into the draft. There are two main cards in contention here. One incredibly narrow, the Mantis Rider, but it is incredibly powerful. Only going to be playable in Jeskai, where you're blue, red, and white. But if you're in that color trio, you're getting a 3-mana three 3-3 three, three Flying Vigilance Haste, which is nuts. This can win a game super fast. Excellent evasive threat. There's also Feat of Resistance, which is very, very powerful and very flexible, fitting into Abzan or Mardu or Jeskai as just the best combat trick in the format, the best combat trick in a lot of formats in a while. Protects you from removal, wins almost any combat, leaves you with a permanent plus one plus one counter buff. Card is really great, but Mantis Rider is super fun and immensely powerful, even if it is a lot more narrow. So I'm going to try starting with the Mantis Rider today. For pack one, pick two, we've got a Goblin Slide, which is a pretty fun build around if we want to go for all non-creatures all day long, but that is a super, super narrow card. We could also take a Ruthless Ripper out of black, but that doesn't work with Mantis Rider. There's really nothing good in Jeskai to go with Mantis Rider. The only thing close would be Goblin Slide, but I feel like Goblin Slide and Mantis Rider decks can be very different kind of decks anyway. So it's kind of kind of an awkward pack here. Honestly, the pack as a whole is pretty weak. I think the only good cards are like Ripper and Loxodon. Then Ride of the Serpent is really expensive, but it is removal. Yeah, I just don't think we're getting anything great here no matter what. It's either Goblin Slide, because it sort of is a Jeskai card, but not when we're trying to go creature heavy and aggressive like we probably will with Mantis Rider. I'll just take the Ruthless Ripper, but not super happy about that pack. Pick number three, another really weak pack overall. The Vizier is okay with like a whole ton of Delve cards, but all it is is just one beefy creature. doesn't give you any extra value or fantastic abilities or anything. Blazebringer is terrible. Incremental Growth is narrow. These commons are all pretty mediocre outside of Abomination being the best one towards Sultai. Yeah, another tremendously weak pack overall. We could just take a Jeskai student to get filler two mana creatures to get aggressive. Scoured Barons, but that's not fixing towards Jeskai, unless we want to splash in Mantis Rider and be like Mardu at the core or something. Yeah, I don't know. I'm just going to speculate on some fixing, just in case we end up in a really weird position here. Pick number four, Hordling Outburst is great. That'll work well with our Mantis Rider, but we can also take the Swift Water Clips for fixing to go with it and the Force Away for a Bounce Spell. Now we've got some good cards, and luckily they're pretty much all in Jeskai. I think everything else in the pack's pretty mediocre. It's mainly Outburst, Force Away, Swift Water Cliffs, although Death Frenzy has some matchups where it plays super well. I think we gotta go for the Outburst here. That's just a super wide board state for just one spell giving you three bodies. Pick number five. Speaking of one spell giving you three bodies, we could take a Take Up Arms here. We could also take Alabaster Kieran and go more for just Evasive Threats. It's another great way to play it out, or we could take the red-white dual land to help us out in Jeskai. That is definitely a pretty high pick. Could take it over the uh, the Kieran or the take-up arms here. I like the take-up arms a good bit, because if the more like the more cards that we have that make a wide board state, the better they're all gonna get. And this is also an instant speed card to trigger prowess, which is the main mechanic of Jeskai, so sometimes that is pretty relevant as well. I'm gonna go for the take-up arms here. I think all three of these would be very reasonable picks though. Windscarred Crag might be like the most correct, just to play it real safe mana-wise. Pick six, Abzan Battle Priest is great, even if it's the only card that gets plus one plus one counters, you just play it. Put a counter on it next turn, so it's a four power lifelinker, and then it's just great from then on. So Priest is the best card outside of a dual land. But a dual land is very much on the table here as a potential option. We're going to be a three-color deck because we're trying to play Mantis Rider, and we're going to be running a double red card like Hordling Outburst, so we could have some real difficult mana costs. I'm actually going to go for the Windscarred Crag over the Battle Priest. Really close, though. Pick number seven. Ride Down is okay. It's very narrow, only being helpful to you when you're on the aggressive, but when you are, it's going to clear out their blocker, let you trample over, get your damage in still. So we'll take that. Nothing else in Jeskai is any good here, really. I really dislike Swift Kick. Um, Tormenting Voice is pretty filler. Barrage is narrow, and Hate Blade does not do anything without the black mana, so ride down it is. Pick number eight. 
bunch of garbage outside of Abomination, so I'll just take an Abomination, even though we're probably not playing it. We're pretty far away from Soul Time, but who knows. Mystic of the Hidden Way is fine. Unblockable threats are pretty great in the format. Leaping Master is also okay. Pick number 10, Act of Treason just to cut people out of Jeskai. No, I'd rather just speculate on Ride of the Serpent, because we're just not going to play Act of Treason. So just in case we get pushed into black, now we have Ride of the Serpent and Abomination and Ripper towards like some kind of Soul Tie backup plan. Now an incremental growth towards that deck. All right. Some on-color filler here. And just holding down the alt key to see if there's any of those cards I don't have a play set of yet. Pack two, pick one, we get another great blue rare, so we can just stick to our guts here in Jeskai. Karu Spell Snatcher is going to be a three mana morph, and then for six mana you flip it up. Then you get to counter one of your opponent's spells and exile it, and then cast it for free later, which is really gross. One of the best morphs to flip up later in the game. Super, super great rare. We're going to take that here. We'd love to wield the Arrow Storm, but that looks impossible here, being the only card out of Jeskai that we're that interested in. Disdainful Stroke's okay, but pretty narrow. Yeah, I don't think we're getting anything back out of this pack, but we gotta take that Spell Snatcher. Pack 2, pick 2, we've got a white-blue dual land, or a red-white dual land. The red-white dual doesn't gain us life, but it can randomly hit a black source for us if we get a really splashable black spell. The on-color spells, the red-white and blue spells here, are just not that great, so we're definitely taking mana over them. I'm going to take the outpost. I feel like the added versatility of maybe splashing in a black spell is a little stronger than just the one life gain. Especially since we already have one black dual lands, this would be two black sources in the deck naturally if we find something incredible. I don't think any of the black cards we've taken so far are something that we splash in, but leaves us open to getting past some kind of great Mardu rare if Mardu's particularly open from a certain direction. Pack 2, pick 3, Feet of Resistance, 100%. Love this card, it's insane. It's better than Arrow Storm, better than Rough Rider, better than Windscarred Crag. Slamming it in. The closest competition here is the Windscarred Crag, followed by the Arrow Storm. Let's say one, two, and three for the pick order. Pack two, pick four. Mistfire Weaver is pretty great. Just casting it as a four mana three one flyer is perfectly reasonable in this set. Just good evasive threats like flyers and unblockable creatures are fine. And if you do have the mana to morph it down and flip it up later, then you can counter a removal spell with it, which is super gross. So take a Mistfire Weaver. Pack 2, pick 5, no good lands for us. There's an Arrow Storm, though, which is solid removal. That's also a finisher. I do like Arrow Storm. I guess Bloodfell Caves would be an okay land for us because that would help in the speculating on splashing in a random Mardu rare with these other black lands, but I'm going to take Arrow Storm here. Leaping Master is actually getting pretty high on our pick order at this point because we're very low on cheap creatures. Got a bunch of creatures turn 3 and 4 now. Mainly just a bunch of 3 mana uh, ways to play creatures, but nothing at 2 mana. So we need to start taking random dorks like Leaping Master. I'm not taking Valley Dashers though. Taking Alabaster Kieran here over the Valley Dasher. Pack 2, pick 7. I guess Dragon's Eye Savants is a 2 mana play. A 2 mana creature. It's not what we want though. We want 2 mana creatures to attack with. Not trying to get to six mana for something like River Wheel Aerialists. I think we're trying to be pretty quick, pretty tempo based and low to the ground. I'll take the Savants. Maybe just play a Savants and then play a bunch of flyers and unblockable creatures is a fine game plan. Just keep blocking everything all day long. Pick eight. We are not going to have a wide enough board state for Rush of Battle. Well, I mean, maybe. We've got to take up arms and a Hordling Outburst. It's probably better to speculate on that than take a Glacial Stalker. Yeah, I might be wrong on that. We'll take a Russia Battle for now, but it's probably the first card that ends up getting cut here. Pick 9 is nothing, so I'll hold down the Alt key and Rare Draft something. I guess Seek the Horizons for the collection. Pick number 10. Alright, Valley Dashers, now is your time to shine. If we can't find any other 2 drops... I guess we'll play you and get forced into chump attacking into two threes. 
I think the Valley Dashers are fine in certain decks, really just Mardu raid decks that really want to make sure they have creatures attacking early. Really not for this kind of Jeskai deck. And they're never better than fine. Fine is like the best that they get, and that's when like your deck is very well built for them. So they are not high on my pick order. All right, pack number three, give me some goods. That is some goods. Oh no, okay. I should have specified I wanted the goodies split up so we could get them all, because there's a Winter Flame here, an excellent tempo removal spell, locking down a blocker. Not locking it down, but tapping down a blocker, shooting another blocker, can get a lot of damage in, or it's just a great defensive play as well. The Hortling Outburst helps get our board state really wide for that rush of battle, but there's also the Bomb Rare Thousand Wins, where if your opponent goes for an all-out attack, this just like wins you the game. You bounce most of their creatures back to their hand. If any of them have Vigilance, you just eat that one up with a 5-6. Thousand Wins is insane. That's definitely the pick. Another big finisher morph card. And now pack three, pick two, we get another Hortling Outburst still, so that's beautiful. We will take that. So now I've got a 7 mana card to flip up, a 6 mana flip up here with the Spell Snatcher. We're actually going to want 17 lands here, because these are some high mana value, but very, very impressive flips. Pack 3, pick 3. Another Rush of Battle, an Arrow Storm, or a Leaping Master. I kind of feel like I have to take a Leaping Master with our mana curve, but Arrow Storm is also very reasonable. Got two Outbursts and a Take Up Arms, so Russia Battle's not terrible either. I think I'm taking a Leaping Master though. Pack three, pick four. Now we can take a Master of the Way. Great two for one removal spell. Pretty easy to clear out a, a morph like a 2 2 with this and draw a card. A little more difficult to make it deal more damage because it's equal to the number of cards in your hand, but you always draw a card and kill something in the process, which is great. Take a master of the way. Okay, pack three, pick five. We've got Arrow Storm, Set Adrift, Force Away. I really like the raw efficiency of Force Away as a tempo play. It's incredibly good against the decks that are trying to play a morph turn 3 and then flip it and eat one of your creatures turn 5. Because then they've dumped like 8 mana into that morph and you just put it right back in their hand. They don't even get the kill anymore. I'm going to take the force away here. I'm a big fan. Pack 3, pick 6. Random morph flyer seems fine. Trumpet blast seems okay. Trumpet blast might be better than rush of battle in this deck. For the instant speed. Yeah, Sage Eye Harrier is not looking incredible, and I don't really want Smite the Monstrous. Maybe we try a Trumpet Blast. Okay, Alabaster Kieran or Crippling Chill are the only playables. 12 creatures, 2 outbursts, and a take up arms. 15 creatures. We want a really high count with Trumpet Blast Rush a battle, so we'll take the Kieran, I think. Warname Aspirant over the Alabaster Kieran, so we can get a much better 2-drop into our deck and hopefully get enough 2-drops that we get to cut the Valley Dasher. Pack 3, pick 9, a great morph flip. Well, a good morph flip with the Ifrit Weapon Master. Firehoof Cavalry's fine at enabling raid. Ramparts is a lot of mana, but it can win... A board stall really late in the game. We don't have like any prowess weirdly enough, so I don't think Defiant Strike really does anything. Probably not playing Cancel, but who knows? Or the uh, Seven Drop Flyer. I'll play 7-drop morphs, because you can always play them on turn 3, even if you don't end up flipping them later, but something that's stuck in your hand until you have 7 mana is just a lot. Just a lot, unless you're specifically a big, grindy, slow deck. 
yeah, I don't think there's anything on the side we really want in here, so we just cut three cards and call it a deck. So I've got a big old morph stack. We got 16 creatures, 10 non-creatures, but three of our non-creature spells are two copies of Fordling Outburst and a Take-Up Arms, so it's kind of like 19 creatures here. We could still cut, like, exclusively non-creatures, because with Trumpet Blast and Rush of Battle, we want a wide board state of a lot of creatures. So 19, if I cut three creatures, we're at like 16 creatures here. So I'm going to cut like one non-creature spell. Maybe we cut the rush of battle and then cut a creature. Or cut a, a rush of battle and two creatures. Then we still have the trumpet blast to try to cheat some hordling outburst or take up arms wins. I don't know if we need two big anthem finishers. I think that's what I'll do. Let's cut a rush of battle. Keep all the lands in because we've got such a big seven mana and six mana morph that are just game enders. But just cut rush of battle and two dirtly creatures. So we just make a stack of our most mediocre, most dirtily creatures. And then pick my two least favorites. Yeah, cut two of these, I guess. I've got a two-drop raid card. Might keep the cavalry in for that. It's gonna be just a one-mana one-one with no text so often, though. I don't know. How many flyers and unblockable creatures do we have? We have two Kirins. A Thousand Winds, a Mantis Rider, a Mistfire Weaver, a Leaping Master, and a Mystic of the Hidden Way. We have like seven flyers or unblockable creatures. Sitting behind an 06 might work out sometimes, and when it doesn't, we can just morph this down. And then just only flip it up if it's about to die to something. Sandbar's literally just a 2-1 no text, but that's probably better than a 2-2 that forces itself to chump attack. Keep the, the Prowler, I think that's fine on curve. Let's drop Valley Dasher Cavalry. Do this. Looks fine. Yeah, sure. Is the mana base looking good here? 12 red cards, 10 blue, 7 white. We've got 7 red sources. That's our highest. And then blue, we've got seven blue sources. And then white, one, two, three, four, five. So seven, seven, five is the split. Looks good enough to me. We might even want an eighth red source because we have two hortling outbursts that need double red. We have a summit prowler that needs double red. We have an arrow storm that needs double red. We don't have any cards that need double white. And our blue cards don't need double blue until turn six and onward. Until land number six and onward. It's just the two morph cards that need double blue. We might even go eight, eight, six, five here. Because some of our white spells are our strongest cards. Like we want to hit that mana pretty consistently. Maybe that'd be an easier way to cut around things, though, if we drop, like, the Alabaster Kirins and the Take-Up Arms and just put more blue and red spells in just to make the mana base easier. But the blue and red spells we'd be putting in would be significantly weaker than those. Be like a Whirlwind Adept and a Valley Dasher. Yeah, no, we'll just keep it like this. Have a bit of a difficult mana base. Not immensely, but I think I do want an 8th red source. Cut down to four white at that point. 
because it is kind of like not necessary to have white mana to like turn four. Mantis Rider is still going to be good even if we play it on like turn five and onward. The only card in white that is not good if we don't have the white source for it is Kier, and we really want to drop this turn four. But that's still definitely much later than the blue and the red spells. And the Hortling Outbursts, we like really want to play turn three, so having the eight red sources towards that does feel kind of mandatory. So we'll go eight, seven, four. Or eight, six, five. But I'm going to go eight, seven, four. Still keep blue pretty high because there's definitely a lot more blue than white still. Yeah. Wrap up the mana base like that and call it a deck here. All right, here's a look at our final deck list for today. We've got a nice little Jeskai beatdown deck. We've got some great evasive threats all over this deck with cards like Mantis Rider, Alabaster Kirin, the huge top end, a thousand wins, some unblockable cards like Mystic of the Hidden Way. So lots of great evasive threats to break through board stalls, get those last few points of damage, but in the early game, plenty of cheap threats and some wide board states with cards like Hordling Outburst and Take Up Arms to go wide. Trumpet Blast to get those last few points of damage in. And again, plenty of just two mana, two ones, and three mana morphs to slam down on the board and keep beating down with. So pretty aggressive deck here. Definitely hoping that our mana base works well, because again, being in full three colors means it's a bit awkward. We could definitely hit the wrong colors at the wrong times, and the deck slows down quite a bit for that. But fingers crossed here that it all pans out fine for us, and we'll figure it out soon enough as we head into the gameplay. All right, here we are on the play for game one. Definitely a slower hand, but this looks like a hand that can really grind out a long game well. We've got a two for one removal spell with Master of the Way. We've got the thousand wins to bounce like our opponent's whole hand, or their whole board back into their hand. Not a really good late game. And we can still, we're going to have to just morph the Thousand Winds on the board turn three, which is a little sad because that means we are putting at, at risk of some cheap removal from our opponent. But it is what it is. We can't sit here and do nothing till turn four, most likely. I guess we could if they just spent turn two on Tormenting Voice, but I would still rather not. Let's curve out a bit here from turn three onward. Playing against Teamer, blue, red, and green. All basics over there. And there is their morph. So that will be our target for Master the Way next turn. So I don't want to ride down it or anything. Let's just cast an Alabaster Kieran. Get my second blue source on the board right now so I don't forget it later. I have done that before. Just assume that Nomad Outpost can provide blue mana and then accidentally don't get to flip the Thousand Winds. That would be horrific. Here comes a Morph with four mana to flip it up. Could be like a Canyon Lurker that flips into a 5-2, so I don't really want to block it with Alabaster Kieran. It's a Mardu Heart Piercer. That's disgustingly good here. That's actually incredibly irritating. Kills my thousand wins? Come on. R.I.P. Well, let's kill this morph. I'm gonna be really sad if they were just triggering raid. Wow. Yeah, they were. They couldn't even flip it up there. So I should have just blocked with Kieran last turn. It's a little hard to... Well, I guess they had a combat trick if they're doing this. Does so they have another Heart Piercer? If they have another Heart Piercer, it's only going to kill Kieran if I block it still. They just play a post-combat Heart Piercer. Soul Tie Flayer. Okay. Alright, so... I guess, yeah, now that I think about it that way, if I blocked their Morph last turn, they would have killed the Kieran with the Heart Piercer instead of the Thousand Winds, which would have been better for us, but they still would have killed something, so it's not the end of the world, like I was kind of making it out to be. And this way we've got quite a lot of pressure on our life total by top decking this Mantis Rider.
Not gonna put anybody at risk of a combat trick or a heart piercer. Dragon scale boon, sure. Clear out the one ones, friend. No more lands, please, arena. Actually, this many lands might already be a death sentence. Because I think our opponent wins this race a tiny bit. Yeah, they hit us twice before we hit them twice. They're winning the race. We're like one spell from victory if they can't deal with these. Just any blocker in the universe and we'd win this race. Come on, top deck. Almost almost any non-creature in the deck, I think, is a really good draw here. Okay. Three to flip. Or sorry, five to flip, three to morph. Zero, five, six, seven, eight. That's eight mana total. So I can play this face down and then flip it up on blocks. Then we can try to ride down for lethal. This five mana to flip, right? Yes, it is. I just need to have one creature with at least three power on board. Although if I ride down something that has four toughness or more, the Soul Tie Flayer will gain them enough life to win. So I need them to like chump block with a tiny creature. Hand attack in with a three power creature this turn. Turns into a four three, it gives something else plus three plus oh. We don't want to kill any creatures with four toughness or more because of Soul Tie Flayer. And we want to keep a three power creature out. Hopefully, they can't. F I guess we just do this and we hope they can't flip both of the morphs. That way, we get to keep one of our creatures. Our three power Mantis Rider or our four power First Striker, either of those is enough to lethal on the crack back if they play something that I can ride down without giving them life gain. And we have to block three creatures here regardless. They have the 5-5 five, five Trampler, we go to one and then we kill them on the crack back. No flip. I think no flip is fine for us. I feel like I shouldn't try to flip here, because then if I try to flip, they get to flip in response to my flip. I don't know, I don't have anything else to do with my mana anyway. But if I flip this up, I'm giving a creature plus three plus so, which means that then if they flip this and I kill it, they gain life. Or if I target this one, I kill that and they gain life. But if this resolves and they play one removal spell, then we lose. We're so damned if we do and damned if we don't here. I'm using it on the Mantis Rider instead of the Kirin, because if I use it on the Kirin, then... They're definitely gaining four life. Oh, wait. Wait, why would they do that? Oh my god, I don't even need to cast a spell now. Oh my god, okay. Okay, I thought for sure we were just losing there. When they decided to go for a flip. Okay, they must have not had removal in their hand then. That was terrible. There were so many ways we could have not killed them there because of the Soul Tie Flare. Or if this was just slightly smaller and it was a trade for the Rider, they would have gained the life and not died on the crackback. Then we would have died the next turn. We drew a Force away, so maybe we could have survived another turn. That was a great draw, but I don't think so. Not at three life. Wow. All right. That was a really close one. I have no idea if I played the endgame correctly there, but... 
it was a it was a hard one for sure. We are one and zero heading into game number two. All right, here we are on the play for game two. It's a little slow. We're starting things turn three, but I do like the quality of the spells, and I love having all three of our colors immediately. There's a two drop, technically. They are on Mardu. Yeah, might not be the end of the world to just play an 06. I was thinking about just holding on to it so we can play another 2-2 to beat down with, but seeing red, white, black from our opponent, they are probably aggressive, so an 06 blocker is fine. Okay. Drop a Mistfire Weaver. It's only three to flip up. Okay, I thought it was only two. Three's a little awkward. All right, they get free raid triggers if they need them. Nope, just another Leaping Master. Here's my second blue to flip up the Spell Snatcher, but I can't do that till I have five mana anyway. Do I still want to just put it on board for now? I think I do, because next turn I'll have the mana available to flip up my Hexproof card and cast a Force Away in the same turn. Although I guess then I'd have the mana to flip up my, or not flip up, but play the Spell Snatcher face down and cast a Force Away in the same turn. So either way, I'm going to have enough mana to do something and Force Away on turn 5. Ooh, bunch of 1-1s. One That's a little nasty. I don't think we're arrow storming any of these small creatures. Holding up on blocks, hoping they try to play some kind of removal. And then we can ruin the removal with a Hexproof trick. And we might just force away a Goblin because we permanently kill it. But we also might just be blocking two Goblins with two two twos. And they might go for like a Trumpet Blast, give the whole board plus two plus oh. That'd be super bad. Super, super bad for us. We can top deck a basic. We will be in, ex in an excellent position. We cannot. Could still be okay. Alright, they just passed the turn here. Probably do need to slow them down with the force away. Let's hit the morph. Could permanently kill a goblin, but this way I just soak up their whole next turn into remorphing this. Ooh, it shuts off a blocker. Alright. Okay, no 6th mana yet, but we find a 2-drop that's perfectly reasonable on blocks, so we'll cast it. Because we can cast that while still holding up our Hexproof trick. I definitely don't think that we are in the aggressive position here against all these creatures. If we were, then it would definitely be worth... Um, flipping our flyer just to start attacking with it. But I don't think we're in a position to do that just yet as soon as we flip the 6-6 six, six, we probably just start beating down or not the 6-6 six, six, the 6 mana card cast one of our opponent's spells against them and the really awkward part is that flipping our hexproof flyer this is going to make it so we have a 1 toughness blocker instead of a 2 toughness blocker. Dang, if we hit 6th mana on curve and we got to steal a 5 mana spell from our opponent, that would have been so nice there. That would have been so good. Wow, we're really not going to hit it. Uh, I guess we just arrow storm the 5-4 then. Don't have the hexproof trick up, but they're not really casting any removal still, so. Boop it. We're going long game here. Hard cast the Horde Ambusher, so they have three mana up to give one of these flying, I guess? No, what is this three mana up for? Maybe another morph post-combat? Suspicious. Well, if I'm not going to hit the 6th land, as long as I keep hitting 2 drops, it's okay, because I'll still keep doing things.
Mardu Charm, get a couple 1-1s. One uh, we're going to get Trumpet Blasted so hard. The super sad part is we've been like one man away from super stopping it. No. Ah. Literally draw one more land this game and it's so in the bag. Steal the ankle shanker from them here. I've had like three turns to hit the land for that. Well, that's egregious. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. God dang it, man. Can't block anything here, then we master the way, and the next turn we're at seven life on blocks. They have Feet of Resistance as their last card. I'm going home. <laughs> Land number six! What is wrong with you? Here we are for game three with some horrific mana. Strong spells, but horrific mana. I don't think we can keep this. It's also very bad mana, but it is a Plains Away from a Mantis Rider. We at least can morph a thing. Ditch the ride down. Probably better than a mole to five by a tiny, tiny bit here, but definitely a gamble. Smoke Teller, turn two from our opponent. There's a Hordling Outburst, so we've got a turn three play set up now. It's a solid one. Trade two thirds of this card for their Smoke Teller. There's another morph for us, so we have plays for the next two turns now. And whenever we hit the white source, we'll be in a pretty excellent position. So we can wait a little while for it. Now, any land means we get to morph down a Weapon Master and cast an Aspirant. Armament Core, that is gross. This is a huge board now. Just gonna juice up just the Smoke Teller? Sure. 4-4 four, four Smoke Teller. He yeah, trades 1 for 1 into a 5-2 Canyon Lurkers, so I think we just wait to flip that on them. Oh boy. Um. Yeah, I guess we're just flipping a 5-2 on blocks now. That's all we've really got. Because we don't have reasonable attacks to trigger the Aspirant Raid. Unless I just want to chomp attack with a goblin. Okay, I'd rather try to kill the Smoke Teller than the Armament Core, because since they are a black deck, if I kill the Armament Core and it's in their graveyard, they could pick it up with a Dutiful Return or something and recast it later, which would be really bad. Murderous Cut? Alright, still soaks up all their mana, gets rid of a uh, removal spell as a one for one. Oh boy. Drop another face down. <laughs> I've literally drawn all but one of my white spells. The only white spell left in our deck is Alabaster Kieran. When you figure that we put the ride down on bottom, so that doesn't count. There's only one white spell left. We have to block at least one thing here. Man. What is going on with my record lately? It just doesn't feel like anything that could be done about it. Yeah, there's been flaws with the decks that we've been drafting lately, but there's been flaws with every deck every deck I've always drafted. I think these are like on par with the decks I've been drafting for months, if not years. But lately, the the win streak is just getting demolished. Wow. We are just all on the 0-3s and 2-3s this week. Well, I guess we don't get to be top 1500 Mythic this season. Get our 20 playing points.
hopefully 2024 we change things right back around with the variety draft formats going back to Kaladesh Remastered and the like. But it really feels like so much of this just horrific loss streak lately has just been games like that where it's just like, well, what are you going to do? Been a rough week. It's two games in a row we didn't have much control over. Hopefully we can get a few wins, crack back into getting some amount of gems out of this instead of just being negative value, but we'll see. As we head into round number four, one and two. All right, here we go for game number four. We're on the draw, so let's hope they're not super aggro over there, but we've got all three of our colors this time around. We need to draw another mountain or a plains to be able to actually cast red-white spells like the ride down. Um, I'm going to keep the savants in hand here, because if we don't hit exactly a red source for outburst, we can just play this face down, get a 2-2 instead of an 6 which will probably be preferable. There's the red source, though. So outburst it is, especially with a trumpet blast in hand. Slam in with the morph, no blocks. Mardu Horde Chief, wow, they are really curving. Well, if they had two drop into Horde Chief, that would have been disastrous, but still. Three drop morph into Horde Chief is still pretty excellent. Horde Chief, just in general, a fantastic card in the set. Okay, we can ride down the Mantis and Trumpet Blast this turn. It's gonna be obvious we've got the Trumpet Blast, but if I cast Ride down here, I do that and play a Morph, or I do that in a Trumpet Blast, and that's it. Maybe I'm just on ride down for now. We save the trumpet blast for a super wide board state. Oh yeah, I can't ride down and trumpet blast because I'd have to tap the outpost towards the ride down. So yeah, we just ride down here. Or poke for two. Either's fine. Okay, if we poke for two, then I get to play two creatures here. And we want them to be both able to attack. We don't want to play the 06. We want to play the 2 2 part. Seeker of the Way, one of the best uncommons in the set. Really great prowess triggers on that. Here comes the High Spire Mantis. No blocks. That means we get to, to uh, slap in for two. Spell Snatcher, I despise you. If I morph the Spell Snatcher onto the board, we're never going to hit our sixth land. But if I don't play the Spell Snatcher, we're going to immediately draw the sixth land. So, uh, so what's the the play then? What's the idea here? I feel like I still am supposed to just play it. Ah, uh, all right, here it is. We'll see if the Curse of the Spell Snatcher remains, and this is now guaranteed I don't hit the 6th land. We're at a 44% right now. I think by the end of the last game we were at like a 55% or something, so we lost like 4 coin flips in the end. Maybe not 4, probably at least 2. 2 or 3 turns there where we were sitting on 5 lands waiting for the 6th. Um, it was just Trumpet Blast of their own. We can go 1-1 one, one for 1-1 one, one here, at least. Oh, this could be the flip up, give some plus 2, or plus 3, plus 0. If it's Trumpet Blast, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, we don't die to Trumpet Blast. I can't flip anybody here. This could be the 4-3 the first strike that buffs somebody else. So we probably can put three power under the Horde Chief and it'd be fine. This is making our Trumpet Blast a lot weaker though, but we need to like not take a million damage here. Probably do this. This plays well against the 4-3 that flips up and it plays fine against Trumpet Blast. All right, it is the 
I think that's the best we could do against the 4-3 that flips. Maybe put a 1-1 under that to chump some more damage. Would have been reasonable. Because we're going pretty low here. Dead to an arrow storm. Unless we hit the 6th land, but we put the Spell Snatcher on board face down, so we won't. We'll remain dead to an arrow storm instead of having the perfect response to it. That's the part that's so frustrating about it, is that, like, I have the perfect response. If they try to arrow storm me to death, but I just don't have the mana for it. And I had the perfect response to Ankle Shanker, but I just didn't have the mana for it. It's just staring at me being so rude. I'm going to attack all here, I think. Well, we only have one blocker up if we do this. 3, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. I kill them if they don't block at all. And I kill them... No, I would need another red source. See, with another red source, I could kill them... Even if they blocked one creature. I guess because I have Force Away, this might be okay. Trumpet Blast plus Force Away. Kill one of their blockers this turn, and then Force Away an attacker, block a Mantis. And we might just kill them here. With Trumpet Blast. If I could Trumpet Blast plus Ride Down, it would have been so good. But I'm also one mana off from that. Need another red. If they block with both of these creatures, and then they have a removal spell, I'm still not dead, because I force away the Weapon Master and just take three. Yeah. Just go for it. Okay. Cool. The trumpet Blast it is. They're not dead, but I'm not dead. Because I've got a force away, even if they have removal. And obviously if they don't have removal, then I'm very much not dead. I think we save the force away for instant speed here. Another weapon master. Off the Mantis. They're at five. If I force away the High Spire Mantis, I can go to one. They block the Morph, take four. No, I ride down for lethal. Yeah, we take all of this and then we ride down for lethal. Because it's like they stopped zero damage this way. Fashionable timing. Land six. I wonder if we're going to flip this thing one time this game. Or this draft. We'll find out. Okay. Really insanely close game there. Literally one life to zero. But we do manage to pull another victory back out of this draft. At least two wins. Really crossing our fingers to keep it up. Get a nice little win streak here. Maybe get to at least four wins so we can break even. Keep a good stack of gems in the collection, but... We'll see how it all pans out. We're heading into game number five now. Two and two. All right, game five. Opponents on the play. We need to hit a mountain or a plains, but if we do, this hand's going to be insane. And we did hit a mountain. So we've got the turn three Mantis Rider. We have a morph as well if I stop hitting lands. If I can keep hitting lands, then we've got a Kieran turn four, a Master of the Way turn five. Playing against Boros right now, so Mardu or Jeskai. Could force this away, go full tempo here, because it's going to be a long time since I have that extra mana up, especially because we don't know if we're even hitting more lands to play things on curve. Yeah, let's go full tempo. Let's bounce that and we get to see what it is. A Freet Weapon Master. All right, full speed ahead. Mantis Rider, jam in. Let's go. Abzan Battle Priest is the play. No land for us. Very happy with my decision to force away then. I 
feel like I just want to hard cast these as flyers. So we play the Hordling Outburst right now. Yeah, clutter up the ground. We get to four mana, we can cast Aspirant and Savants in the same turn if we really need to establish some blockers. So Lifelink on the Battle Priest is going to be an issue, but we can try to make sure we have enough cards left in hand. Oh. Well, let's say we can try to have enough cards left in hand to have this kill their thing. I just take three and then they trade if they want it. If Because <laughs> of the Vigilance. I don't think there's a reason to not just trade here. Because again, if I don't and then I go for the crackback, then they take the trade and they got three damage and got the trade. So, yeah, there's no one red mana spell in this format. It's going to be a trade either way, at least this way I don't take the three. Oh! Okay, there was one reason. Potentially. Okay. Now we drop the Aspirant so they can't attack in with Priest without killing it. Or bouncing it. I think that was the only card in the deck that would be a reason. I guess there's Feet of Resistance as well, so there were two cards we could have drawn into that would have played well. Not going for the immediate trade against Mantis Rider, but anything else. They would just trade next turn anyway. Oh, I forgot I still have this in here. This should just be a plane. <laughs> well, that's my fault. That's not good at all. That's a big flaw in this deck. If that were literally just a play in Seer, this would have been such a good turn. We play the Alabaster Kieran against the 2-2 Flyer. Instead, I guess I just drop the Savants since I can flip it up for free. Hmm... If I attack with the Aspirant, it's too easy for them to counterattack with the Battle Priest and gain 5 million life. I need to hold up enough power to kill the Battle Priest. Wow. Well, so much for blocking. It also kills all of my goblins. Yikes. Three damage. I need another card for Master of the Way to kill the Battle Priest. I can double block the Battle Priest, though. They've got no way to give it first strike or anything. The only thing in their hand just gives plus three plus zero for a turn. So I can just double block trade into Battle Priest, go down a card there. If I get the Skaldkin off the board. If I don't get the Skaldkin off board, they can sack at instant speed to kill one of the two blockers. So I think I have to Master the Way Skaldkin here. Buff the 1-1. One, one. Attack with just that here. Yep. That's what it looks like. Oh, they attack with the Horde Chief too? Um, I could trade into the Horde Chief. I'm going to need 5 power up to clear out the Battle Priest. There's a lot. We're never getting through the Weapon Master. That 4 power First Striker is not good for me. Sort of feels like I have to take six, which is miserable. I 
Just cast a take up arms. I could cast a flyer and hold up a ride down. But I'm not going to ride down because they're not going to block against all this open mana. Yeah, we're not. We're not getting any good attacks in here. Let's just hold up take up arms, I guess. They're playing off the top. Buff the Battle Priest. This is where that card gets insane. And they top decked some gas. It's a morph spell here. Last turn. Get those 1-1s. One more mana. Drop a Kirin and a Mistfire Weaver. Flip it up later. We've got a couple outs here. It obviously doesn't look good for us, but we could draw into the Thousand Winds. Be the biggest out. No, what on earth did you top deck? Twice in a row, too? Hit a Morph into Hit Trumpet Blast or something here? What is this attack opponent? I swear I am losing my mind. <laughs> okay. Show me the money. Okay, it's just flipping a weapon master. Cool. Just gain a million life. God, it was a... Just have two Weapon Masters for first strike here. No! Another morph? Uh, R.I.P. I should have poked for two. I don't think it's going to matter. They're going to be at like 30 here. <laughs> They're not 30, like 34 even. Get ready for Weapon Master number three to win them the game. Because it just buffs one of these two and we're dead. No. Nope. I mean, they still, they've already won. The Dragon's Eye Savants. All right, well. I'm ready for 2024. December 2023 is the worst season of Limited I've had in a century. It's just the past week, too. It's just like the Christmas week. Holiday week is just some miserable games of magic for us. Again, there's certainly flaws in our deck that we've been talking about when we built them, like before the gameplay even, and those flaws are, are showing up in the gameplay. It's just that I do not think these decks are significantly worse than the decks I've been playing every other season. They are just running, running poorly. None of these decks are, are perfect. They're all far from it, but they are not significantly worse than the decks we've been drafting like a week or two ago. But our win rate, our win rate is significantly worse. So, yeah, again, I don't think there was really anything we could do in any of those games, but especially the first two, the first two were just really rough mana issues for our first two losses third game maybe it was long enough there were enough decision points maybe there was some way things would go to, could go differently but i think this deck was was pretty strong pretty decent i think this is better than a lot of the other decks we've had this week that have been going like oh three to two three would have expected this to be like another four three or five three definitely not a seven win deck or anything but would have expected better than it did we're just in a rut over here for another two three run only a couple hundred gems and just staying well below that top 1200 mythic that we've gotten literally every other season this year really disappointing it's just a weird weird bad week of magic so i guess 11 out of 12 seasons this month will be top 1200 but only got like one or two days left to, to pull ourselves out of the rut. Try to get to top 1200 Mythic. I don't think it's happening this year. 
sad times, sad times all around, but that is going to end today's video. As always, I'd like to thank my patrons and YouTube members for their support, as well as you for watching this video. If you enjoyed this video and are interested in seeing more, you can always like, comment, and subscribe to tell the YouTube algorithm to send you some more of these videos in your recommended feed. If you'd like to catch me live, you can check out the Twitch channel in the link in the description below. And if you'd like to support the channel directly, you can check out the Patreon link in the description below. But other than that, as always, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you again soon for some more Magic Arena.